Do professional equipment really make a difference? Lost track of the forest through the trees, forgot what I was chasing. Spent so many nights living out at sea that my heart is gone vacant. And everybody who was close to me all stayed on dry land. So now I'm driving back on in the state west, I just gotta feel something. Not gonna wait till the morning because something's gonna change my mind. Welcome to my latest vlog and as you can see the sun is shining everywhere It's so lovely today and just gorgeous especially in this place This is Greenwich Park, this is the Royal Navy College and it's absolutely stunning And if you haven't been here before, when you come to the UK or London You definitely have to check this place out And you may actually recognise it because Thor and the Avengers has filmed in here And uh, yeah, obviously the scene was from the sky high up there, not from the ground level, but this is the place to, uh, that where they f actually filmed the whole thing, uh, which is really, really cool. And then, uh, yes, it's absolutely gorgeous. And there's tons and tons you can do around here. You can easily, easily spend a whole day here. But today's video, it's all about professional equipment. And uh, it's a very good question. And many, many people actually confused and never quite understand what professional equipment actually is. All camera manufacturers always have different sorts of production lines or model lines. They have the consumer level or beginning levels and they have the mid-range kind of like enthusiasts or semi-professional and they have the top professional models. So in terms of specification if you look at most of them you know apart from the consumer or beginner levels uh, the semi-pro enthusiast um, mo uh, camera models are very very similar in terms of performances or at least on paper specs compared to the professionals so what sets them apart you know and why there are such a big uh, um, uh, price differences between in the professional and the semi-pro models one of the main reasons why professional grade cameras are so much more expensive is the build. Well, let me talk to you a little bit about that actually, because uh, it's very important to understand that particular point. Um, a, a much more rugged body leads into ultimate reliability. Uh, to many, many professionals out there, including myself, I tend to look after my kit. Uh, I don't really want to drop it anywhere, like, you know, to, uh, uh, you know, really banging around, to be quite honest. I do look after my cameras and lenses in most cases, although accidents do happen and you have to bear that in mind as well. Uh, so, you know, I have my cameras, like my, if you see my E1 Mark II review, I mean, I, I did say that I dropped the, the camera on the floors a couple of times and it did happen. It's all because my client knocked me, like, kind of knocked me and just slipped down my shoulder and just went straight into the floor. And then the other time was the, the camera was actually put on the table while I was actually packing up. Another kid just ran over and just knocked the table and everything fell off, uh, including my camera, of course. Uh, so things do happen and you need the camera to uh, continue to perform really uh, so these sort of things is very very important um, no matter how careful you are there are chances that you know your camera may get damaged or knocked about uh, but for a lot of other photographers like journalists war journalists and uh, paparazzi uh, photographers they really don't care about the cameras a lot you know so these sort of thing you know, a much more rugged built cameras would be a godsend to them, you know, because they need that sort of cameras to be battered around, you know, uh, uh, while it still continue to uh, to perform. Uh, you know, if you haven't seen a journalist camera, you can just Google about, you know, uh, you can see some images that the cameras are totally battered, scuffed up, scars, uh, scratches, pain lost everywhere from the entire body. Uh, they probably go through a couple of cameras a year, to be quite honest, and uh, that's how much they use the cameras. In, imagine that sort of situations when you're in a very hostile environment, you've been knocked about, sandy, wind, dusty, freezing, uh, whatever sort of elements throw into the camera, and uh, there's, there's no time for a pro to look after it, you know, by trying to cover it while changing lenses, for instance. Uh, no, absolutely no time for it. The only reason they are there is to capture those moments and those shots. So they need 
a system, a camera that would do that job for them. Uh, most pro, uh, uh, sorry, most uh, consumers or most uh, uh, just normal photographers, if they're not really relying on their photographs to make money, they would take care of the kids a lot more uh, in general situations. And uh, this is a fact. Uh, even when before, before I became a pro and uh, I was doing such things, you know, I would put uh, uh, filters uh, in front of the lenses, for instance, I would put a lens hood, I would uh, put uh, protective tapes around it and uh, cases, for instance, everything that would make sure that would make my camera not only look nicer but also protects it from other elements as well even though the camera itself is weather seal uh, so this is something that you have to bear in mind um, that these are the differences and also most of the professional graded cameras are also rated in terms of uh, weather sealedness is that worse weather sealedness anyway yes they, they rate it uh, so that means that they are certified to have that sort of uh, weather uh, resistance and uh, while most of the other graded cam uh, like consumer semi-pro cameras they don't um, they say they're weather seal you know that means they most situation in light rain situation they are fine but you know in uh, torrential rain in two to three hours uh, your camera may or may not functions uh, I give an example uh, my Canon 5d uh, did fail on me and uh, you know a few years ago and uh, while I was shooting in China and uh, the it was a torrential rain I was out there for two hours and a few of the buttons stopped functioning basically lucky <laughs> I could still take the shot but I could no way I could review any of the images uh, the menu button completely freezed up and uh, yeah it's nothing I could do about it so the only thing is I had to trust the camera taking the shot and even though that uh, 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 it was DSLR so I had no idea what I've taken it's not an electronic viewfinder so I cannot really judge a lot of things if you can imagine so anyway so this is something that for example so you can see why a rocket camera is so important so many may still argue why you know it's still so much more expensive because no matter how much better built you know how much uh, uh, weather seal you, you put into the camera make it like like storm proof uh, or earthquake proof whatever you know uh, it still wouldn't cost so much more well the thing is here's the thing for any professionals their job is to take that moment or freeze that moment and capture that shot um, a professional grade camera because of the weather seal in the build it will give them the ultimate uh, confidence to do their job so they don't have to worry about things they don't have to have doubts about the equipment uh, they just you know making sure they pick up the camera press that shutter button it fires a shot and capture that that is the key and also you know and that's also one of the reasons why you know many of the professional uh, graded cameras have faster AF you know just a bit more beefier in terms of frame rates and everything like that it's just to allow you to have the opportunities and the chance to capture that perfect shot um, this, this is really something that you cannot really put a price on it is is something when you capture the moment it, it worth millions to be honest and uh, it's something that many photographers just cannot put a price on it so they would just go on and buy that equipment just because they don't have to worry about a thing so far I've been talking about cameras mostly and what about lenses well in fact lenses is actually a little bit easier to understand and also a little bit easier to swallow in terms of the price difference because most of the professional lenses are usually faster like in terms of aperture size uh, for instance and most of the professional lenses are usually already like like zoom lenses for instance they're minimum minimum 2.8 constant apertures and then uh, you have the primes are usually 1.4 maybe 1.2 maybe even faster uh, so they are different and also they will have weather seal uh, that will match the uh, the camera body so they will make sure that you know the combination between the camera and the lens will definitely survive in that sort of hostile environments uh, for instance so this is kind of easy Easier to understand in terms of lenses and optically usually also better as well and uh, they will be a little bit heavier and bigger simply because of the build and the ruggedness they needed to 
to be in and uh, to match that same sort of uh, performance on the camera body uh, so it, that's why but for most people I would say for most majority of the people out there 80 to 90 percent of the people out there the consumer or semi pro uh, gray lenses are absolutely sufficient for instance on the Olympus system their premium line of lenses are absolutely spectacular they're smaller way smaller and they perform just as well as the uh, the pro gray cameras, uh, sorry, not the pro gray lenses, the 1.2 pro lenses, uh, they're great. You know, like uh, I use a lot of premium lenses myself, especially when I'm traveling. Um, but sometimes when I go to a wedding, for instance, uh, this is another thing, you know, um, the 1.2 lenses does actually help a lot. Um, it's really, again, difficult to quantify or justify it um, because uh, when you're in certain situations, uh, in a very, very dark situations, the 1.2 lenses coupled with the, for instance, the 1X will give you a minus six EV sensitivity in AF. You can't do that with a consumer grade, uh, consumer grade lenses. Um, uh, they will allow you only for minus four EV. So that means you will miss two stops of light in terms of AF performance. So in a very dark situations, you will miss the shot. When you miss a shot, what you do, you do, you miss the shot. So you can't do what you want to do as a professional. So that's one of the reasons why it's really difficult to actually say, oh, you know, I want to spend way much more on a, on a pro lens compared to a premium lens. Uh, but this is one of the reasons why that is. So this is it. This is the end of my vlog. And this is why I think the professional equipments are different and better for those who need it. Uh, it's very important to understand that and I uh, hope you guys enjoy the video and don't forget to subscribe for future videos and also stay notified by clicking that bell button so you know when our new video is coming out. So until next time, see you then. Bye. Shoo. This morning I finished a model shoot. Uh, it's a young lady coming all the way from the States, uh, from Michi uh, Mi Michigan, 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 Michigan? Correct me. <laughs> Missing the shot. We're gonna talk to you a little bit about that. Uh, so why it, it is actually, uh, 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 no matter what you do with the camera, and uh, for instance, the one in one mark two, students are loud. Okay. Oh God, it's really, really cold.